Is it wrong to count four episodes as one? Screw it, I'm doing it anyway. Let's move on to number two. Two, the new with the two, what's I gonna do? Donkey Kong Country, Legend of the Crystal Coconut. Yeah, even though Legend of the Crystal Coconut is one of the episodes, you all know which episodes I'm talking about. The episodes featured in this movie. That's right, this is a compilation movie. With episodes Legend of the Crystal Coconut, Bugga Boogie, Ape Nisha, and Booty and the Beast. In that order. They're all tied together with a narrative, and for good reason. They're so epic that they need to be tied together with a narrative. But they still all flow perfectly as a movie. With a minor time paradox, but we'll get to that in a sec. All four of these episodes from Season 1 had Captain Scurvy in them. Captain Scurvy is a pirate whose great-great-great-grandfather, Prince Scurvy, hid the Crystal Coconut in the idol of Inca Dinkadu. Because of this, he believed that the Crystal Coconut was his birthright, and all the episodes featured here would come to Congo Bongo to try and take it, apparently not buying the fact that DK is the one chosen to be future ruler. It's ironic, really, because probably the main villain should be Scurvy. He's the only one with a well-known family history and a more understandable motivation for evil doing than King Karul. I mean, in the show, Scurvy's done terrible things, but it was all out of inspiration from his ancestor. While Karul just does bad stuff for the sake of doing bad stuff. Eh, I'm overanalyzing. So, what was the minor time paradox I was talking about? Well, in Apenesia, DK suffers a horrible case of... Well, you know, and can't remember who he is. The bad guys decide to take advantage of this and convince DK that he works for them. The good guys' method of getting DK to remember who he is is to get him to recall experiences he had in past episodes. Sounds fair enough, except one of these flashbacks is from an episode that would be featured after this one in the movie. That is crazy, and I can't think of any reason why they didn't choose a different episode for Diddy's flashback there. Normally, I just brush this off by saying, Diddy's the psychic, end of story. But if he's trying to get DK to remember it, why well, predict it? But again, overanalyzing. Getting back to Captain Scurvy, though, at first, I wasn't too crazy about him because while a lot of the characters are indeed from the games, Scurvy is not. I mean, I know Scurvy's design is based off of that of a cannon from Donkey Kong Country 2, but I never played it. Heck, I didn't even know what Donkey Kong Country 2 was at that time, or even that it existed. In fact, the first time I was sitting through Pirate Score, and I remember thinking to myself, where are Tiny, Lanky, and Chunky when you need them? However, a lot of fans of the show seemed to enjoy him, and he allowed for a three-way conflict, which at that time didn't show up too often in kids' shows. Combine those two things with his family history sinking in, no pun intended, and the fact that he actually says hell in this movie, Me great 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 grandpappy may he rotten hell! And yeah, his character can kind of grow on you. Although there's another thing about him that just drove me nuts. In his first appearance in Booty and the Beast, you know, the episode that did his psychic flashback took place, Scurvy had a pet parrot named Polly Roger, but after that, Polly was no longer part of his crew and joined up with King Karul's army instead. I wouldn't mind too much, except Polly still talks like a pirate and has even called one a few times. So what happened between him and Scurvy? Did they have a falling out? Was there a shortage of crackers? Did Scurvy get infected with Congo Bongo Gone Rongo disease? I don't know, but what I do know is that I fell in love with this movie as a kid. I still love it. I still watch it over and over again, and it's like this big, wonderful classic. I know most people would probably want me to put the Congo Bongo Festival of Lights in there since that had Scurvy in as well. And yeah, that was pretty awesome too, but this movie itself was pretty much what turned me on to the series. Yeah, I hate the time paradox as much as you do, but the epicness is still worth it. What else can you say but Blunder, Billet, Zack, and Loot! For these characters, fans still root! <laughs> Now I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, the series finale? Isn't that just the one where they reuse clips from season one? I remember that one being especially awesome. Why is this one so special? Well, growing up, I only saw a few of these episodes while it was still on TV, not counting the ones from the movie. I only know a lot of these episodes exist because of my good friend, Mr. Internet. To know that at least they finished strong was enough to make me feel better about what I missed. In my opinion, this is a great way to end the series. The episode begins with DK and Diddy fishing. That image alone sets the final episode moon in my opinion, but let's keep going. Instead of catching a fish, DK catches a bottle, 
And in that bottle, a letter inviting him to the Federation of Future Rulers. So his Kong buddies decide to throw him a party celebrating all the wonderful times they had with him before he leaves, using flashbacks of various clips from Season 1. Even the villains are welcome to this big event, and everybody that attended has something to say about DK. Well, most of them. Dixie sort of dropped the ball on that one. What did I do to make you leave? Anyway, what really makes this episode the best is the interaction the attendees have with DK. Everybody that showed up had their good times and their bad times with him. There's no action, there's no adventure, there's not even any singing apart from the clips. It's just the Kongs chilling out being the Kongs. That is really cool. No pun intended. The way I see it, the strength of the Donkey Kong franchise comes half from him and half from his Kong buddies. So the more funny they think of him, the stronger his franchise is. This is the episode where his buddies seem the most serene. They're not fighting King Karul or protecting the Crystal Coconut, they're just talking about DK. It actually is really nice to see them just relax and be themselves. Now true, there is kind of a half-assed twist at the end, but to be honest, I kind of find it hilarious. And it allows DK to stay in his home island, which we're used to seeing him in anyway. But like I said, it's the interactions with DK and the attendees that make this episode so perfect. The way they think about him and even break the fourth wall. That was my flashback! How did you do that? From now on, get your own dream sequences, okay? <laughs> Don't forget to write, you piggy thug! It's just a wonderful finale, and it sort of makes these characters more three-dimensional than if there was an entire episode dedicated to one of them. But what the heck do I know? Check it out and see what you think of it. And those are my top five favorite Donkey Kong Country cartoon episodes. All these episodes and more are available on the internet. Check them out while you can and see what you've been missing, or if you're currently glad you've been missing. After the runners up. Walking in the woods one day, Chris and Martin saw something strange. A little leaping lemur who liked to bounce and play. They followed their new bouncing friend, not knowing where this adventure would end. The animals were headed just around the bend.